Wars are very scary to think of. Normally when a video game is set in some kind of war, it would be your typical first person shooter. Think of Battlefield or Call of Duty or any of the millionth first person shooter that releases daily at this point, where you play as a human tank that holds the equivalent of the Russian arsenal in their back pocket, mowing down a whole country worth of soldiers without breaking a sweat. But that's a given. First person shooters like COD or anything that resembles COD at this point just wants to give the typical American a way to code, just so they can imagine using their guns they bought in a form of a power fantasy video game. But that's the side nearly every media tries to portray wars like. Not a very horrifying situation, but bye just bye a conflict Russia. where there is a good side and a bad side. And that's what's so horrifying about wars, because when you either watch a movie or play a video game set in a war, that media will try to portray a main character that people will gravitate towards, and an antagonist that people will hate and not side with, no matter the reasoning or the circumstances. But war isn't like this. War is very horrifying, due to the fact that there is no good guy or bad guy. It's two countries that want to benefit from their opposition. Take a look at what's going on around you in real life. But the true horror stems from being a soldier, forced to fight not for your country but because that's the only option you really have. Because I'm pretty sure if a soldier has another option than to die by the hand of a complete stranger that is also forced to fight in a meaningless conflict, I'm pretty sure that they will pick the safer options. And throughout the years, games really never tried to tell a war story accurately through the perspective of your common soldier. And I wouldn't fault them. It's a hard thing to do. What would the normal person want to play? A game where they face hardships and unwinnable odds? Or a game where they can 360 no scope a guy and put it as a montage on Twitter? I'll, I'll choose Fortnite. But one game studio that's known for making one of the most influential gaming franchise of all times decided to take that idea and make it a reality. Not in a boring sort of way where it feels shoehorned in, but more so in a subtle way. A way your average Joe will probably never notice. And that is... Amnesia the Bunker is the fourth installment in the Amnesia franchise, a franchise known for the epic scary jump scare moment from PewDiePie back in the days. If you look at the studio behind the Amnesia games, Frictional Games, you will find out that their catalog is mostly solid, apart from a few okay-ish games. Their most popular games are Amnesia The Dark Descent, a game where believe it or not, you have amnesia, and you must travel through this I'm old haunting castle to uncover the best, and the other game is Soma, a beautifully haunting game about reincarnation done in a good way, not the anime way. If you never played these two games, honestly, you should. But in this video, I'm not going to be talking about these two games. Instead, this video is about Amnesia the Bunker. Amnesia the Bunker is an immersive sim, released by Frictional Games in 2023. In this game, you play as Henri Clément, a French soldier. Now I know, French people are insufferable, and you guys already lost interest, but you decided to leave a like before you tap out of the video. But let me tell you another secret. Uh, I'm also French. Ah, uh, for fuck's sake, let's just get on with this video. The game starts out in the trenches. And it looks like the game is set in World War 1. To be specific, it's the French against the German World War 1. The first part of this game acts as a little tutorial, where the game teaches you the basic mechanics like breaking doors, healing, scavenging for loot, and also shooting. For every kill you get, I'll give you an ooh. <laughs> Alright, bet. <laughs> Now this is a first for the Amnesia franchise, or more specifically a first for Frictional Games games. Normally Frictional Games follows the formula of a horror game where you are the hunted and you cannot defend yourself. Think of Outlast or Blair Witch or any horror game at this point. And just an unpopular opinion by the way, I hate these types of games because most of them are done in a very poor way, where the game revolves around you hiding for 30 minutes just to get spotted and having to hide again for another 30 minutes. Back to the bunker for now. After learning the basic, it looks like you found yourself stuck in the trenches again, next to a gas grenade thrown in by the German soldiers. And just when it seems like you're about to die, your friend Lambert comes in and saves you, giving you a gas mask. The game cuts out to a black screen with the sound of French soldiers chilling in a bar drinking. You and your friend Lambert seems to be betting on something and it looks like Lambert has lost the bet, prompting him to be on patrol that night. The game cuts again and it looks like you're alone in a depressing grey land called the no man's land. You seem to be looking for something specific here and shortly after walking, it seems like you found what you've been looking for, all the way down a 
giant hole. Your friend Lambert is stuck there, badly wounded. You descend quickly to help him, giving him some fresh water you found on a puddle close to you. And after somehow lifting a French soldier up that big hole, you slowly start to go back the way you came from. Only now you are very slow due to having your friend on your back. And shortly after, you hear a German voice screaming. Lights turn on, sirens blaring, and shooting starts. You run quickly trying to escape, but an explosion knocks you out, and then the game cuts again. You wake up again in what seems to be the infirmary. The game tells you that you are on your own now, learn, adapt, and experiment, and survive. And if you guys don't know what that means, it means you're playing an immersive sim, baby. Let's go! Finally, the game gives you complete freedom. Now you can do whatever you really want. You can read some lore, explore the bunker, or do what I did and clip out of bounds with the help of a nice pillow. But before you can advance any further, you will need a light to help you see better. And look no further because only a few steps down the hole you woke up in, you can find a flashlight. And oh my god, this flashlight is the worst flashlight I've ever seen in a horror game. And not in a bad way, by the way. This flashlight is the magnet lamp, or commonly known as the dynamo flashlight. It does not require any any battery or fuel to turn it on, but requires the user to recharge it by pulling the string. Now, why is this bad in this game? Don't worry, you'll know. After walking for a bit, you will find a door locked by a simple key locker. Since we don't have a key for it now, we decide to explore a bit further, and after entering what seems to be the dining hall of the soldiers, we find a half-dead soldier. Anxious, scared. He tells us that there is a monster, a monster that killed nearly all the soldiers here. The higher reps decided to escape and blow the exit in fear of the monster getting out, so we are stuck here until we find a way out. Before you leave, the soldier gives you his handgun, and he asks to be put out of his misery by a comrade rather than a monster. He tells you where to find ammo, so you go there, you get the ammo, reload the gun, and just when you're about to shoot him, the monster quickly snatches the soldier away, killing him as a result. You decide to go back to the locked door so you can brute force your way now that you have a gun, and just as soon as you leave the dining hall, the power cuts off, and you start to hear some rumbling coming from the walls. Being scared shitless in the dark, you shoot the lock in the locked door and run quickly to a another room. You lock the room behind you, you turn on the lamp, and a soothing soundtrack starts to play. This is your safe zone, your one and only safe zone if you're playing in a difficulty higher than normal. This intro is amazing. Everything from the atmosphere to the genius sound design gets you immersed super quickly into the situation, resulting in a very suspenseful yet relieving outcome when the lights turn off and you find yourself running without a purpose just to find a safe zone out of nowhere. And this isn't the only time the game does this by the way, even though this game is like nearly 95% non-scripted, the devs made sure that your immersion isn't going to be less than someone else due to it being non-scripted. Going deeper in the safe zone, you will find some fuel and a big generator, and a guy that has a dog tag with a code in the back. This code is important to open the door for the central bunker door, so don't forget it. But more importantly, next to the dead soldier, you can find a sign that says keep on at all times. The fucker hates the light, and it seems like this sign is referring to the generator and the monster hating the light. So best to take that advice. After refueling the generator and opening the door, this is where the game actually starts. And not to make this video any longer than it is right now, let's talk about the gameplay. Amnesia the Bunker gameplay is simple. If you ever played an immersive sim before, like Prey, System Shock, Bioshock, then Amnesia the Bunker is going to be very familiar to you, in the sense of freedom of choice. You can tackle objectives however you like, not so in depth like Prey or System Shock, but more in a grounded way. For example, if you see an obstacle, you could probably tackle that obstacle in so many different ways. The objective of Amnesia the Bunker is well to escape the bunker, and that's by getting two things. First, the dynamite from the arsenal, and second, the detonator handle found in the Roman tunnel. And to do this, you will have to explore areas in order to unlock more areas by finding key items that will help you escape. Sort of like a metroidvania where you slowly get new stuff to unlock more stuff, but your first task is to lift the lock down by turning this valve. And after turning the valve, it breaks. And now you have to find a replacement. Luckily for you, a soldier has another valve in his locker, so after finding the dead soldier and getting the code for his locker, you can finally lift the lock down. And remember when I said the game started when you entered the central bunker? Well, I lied. The game actually starts now, before all of this the monster was not even here, but now that you lifted the lockdown, the horror truly begins.
After lifting the lockdown, the game now will branch off into different areas. The soldier quarters, the maintenance, the arsenal, the prison, and the Roman tunnels. Like I said before, you will need to find the key items in every part of the bunker. These items will not only help you escape, but also can be used to scavenge for more loot or disarm traps, for example. The most memorable area is probably the pillbox in the maintenance section, because after being stuck in the bunker for what seems like days, the pillbox is where you finally see the light again. Maybe all hope isn't lost. Maybe you can- Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, war is still happening outside. And that's what I like about this game. Throughout your whole playthrough, the game constantly reminds you that war is still happening, be it by an explosion or a random shooting. So the question now is, is outside really better than inside? What would you rather choose? Being stuck inside a bunker with a monster that's bound to leave at some point, or leave in the bunker just to die or even worse, get captured by the enemy team and tortured to death. Amnesia the bunker is really good, and part of what makes it good is the little details fictional games added. Now big opinion right here, I don't like the end game for this game. After blowing up the dynamite, turns out you didn't blow up the exit but instead blew a hole in the ground. Jumping in that hole will lead to the final boss fight and it's super bad. Like this boss will instantly degrade the quality of the monster's AI. And that's coming from me, a guy that's been glazing this game non-stop for the past 10 minutes. So. Amnesia the Bunker is a masterpiece. Even if I wanted to complain about some stuff, I couldn't because most of the bad things about it aren't really that bad. It's just when you have a game that excels at everything it tries, you can't really find bad things about it. Honestly, if you've never played any Amnesia game before, I heavily recommend you guys to play Amnesia the Bunker. This video has taken me a long time to make. I tried to edit more and be more in depth on this video. So if you guys enjoyed watching this video, please do give me a like and maybe subscribe. If this video performs well, it will show me that yes, I can spend a month making a video without worrying about it performing bad. So hey, thank you so much for watching till the end. And as always, is Amnesia the Bunker finally the game that's better than Sonic CD? Nope, a matter of fact, I'm only posting Sonic CD videos from now on. Fuck you guys, bye bye. Probably gonna hit that don't save changes again. Used to write a song a day. It's just that lately my perfection's in the way of me. And I can't make no changes to save me. Wish I could write more. Careless, wish I could write more and careless, write more and careless and careless.